In this video, we are going to talk about some of the popular, most common parent functions. So what a parent function is, it's when the function is very basic. So for example, this is a line. And we've talked about that a line needs to be in the form y equals mx plus b. That means you could have a slope, a number in front of the x, and a number here at the end. So a parent function is not going to have any of these numbers here. It's just going to have the basic function, y equals x. So anytime you have an equation where the highest exponent is a 1, that is how you know, and it's in the form y equals mx plus b, but it might not have those two numbers there. It is linear. So you know it's going to make a line. Notice it goes through the origin here, but it's a straight line. Okay. Now, this graph right here is not a line. It's, it makes the shape of a parabola. But when the highest exponent is a 2, so it's in the form y equals x squared. So again, it could have like a number in front here. It could have a number here, but a parent function doesn't have any of those numbers. It's just basic. It's simple. y equals x squared. So what we call a, an equation when we graph it and it has the highest exponent of a 2, we call it quadratic, a quadratic function. So anytime the highest exponent is a 2, it's going to make this shape. So it might go up. It might go down. You're going to learn more about this in your next math class. So right now you just want to get good at looking at an equation and being able to tell the general shape of it. So if we go back to this one, again, the highest exponent is a 1. And notice it could go up. It could be a line that goes up or a line that goes down, just like the parabola could go up or the parabola could go down but it makes that U shape when the highest exponent is a 2. Okay, next we have this graph right here. And this shape will occur whenever the highest exponent in the equation is a 3. So it looks like Y equals X cubed. So we call this a cubic function. So it means the equation could look like this. We could have other things in the equation, but the parent function is simple. It just has y equals x cubed, and that's what that shape of that graph is, looks like. So it means the graph could go this way instead. But the point is, whenever the highest exponent's a 3, it's going to make this shape right here. I call this the Travolta graph. So just like John Travolta points his finger up and down when he um, dances, same thing here. All right, next graph we have is the V-shape graph. So in order to make this V-shape here, so notice it's not curved like this one here. This is like a U. To make the V-shaped graph, it's an absolute value. So if I were to ask you to if I were to ask you to graph something with these two vertical lines and we had some stuff in the inside or um, an expression in the inside, that's an absolute value function. And the graph is going to make the letter V. Now it could go down, could go up, it could be skinny. But in order to make this V-shaped graph, you need absolute value functions. All right, next one. In order to graph something that looks like this, we need a square root. So the equation will look like Y equals square root of X. So again, we could have numbers around here. But this is the parent function that will make this one that looks just like that. So it's a square root function. Okay. 
Next, we have this graph here. So it goes like this, it goes towards the y-axis, and then it goes like this, and then like this. So to make this kind of graph, we need a fraction like this, where the x is in the denominator. So this is called a rational function. All right, two more left here. This one is linear, so it's linear, but it's a horizontal line. So anytime we have a horizontal line, the equation is always going to be y equal because it's going to cut through the y-axis. All of these points, if I pick any point on this line like this one, has a y value of 5. If I pick this point right here, has a y value of 5. So the equation for this would be y equals 5. So whenever you have an equation that's a horizontal line, you're going to always have y equals, and then there will be a number here. And the name for this is a horizontal line. So it's linear. It's a linear function, but it makes a horizontal line whenever you have a y equals and a number. Okay, next we have a vertical line. And to graph a vertical line, you're going to have x equals and then a number here. So if I were to make the table for this graph here, so if I pick this point right here, that point is at 2, 0. If I pick this point right here, that's at 2, 5. So notice the x values are always 2. So the equation for this particular graph is x equals 2. So you're going to always have an x, an equal, and a number when you have a vertical straight line. So this is called a vertical line. It is linear, though, because it makes a line. Now, I remember these two right here. Um, my little trick is when you look at the letter x, the top of an x makes a v for vertical. So that's how I remember if I have a vertical line, the equation always is x equals and then a number. So this page of notes here, um, what you need to get out of it for this particular class is that you need to be able to understand that for a graph to be a line, the equation's highest exponent's 1. It's in the form y equals mx plus b. And then you could see as you add different things into the equation, the shape of the graph changes because, again, here we have an exponent of 2. Here we have an exponent of a 3. Now, if you want to really prepare yourself for the next math class, I would suggest you taking a picture of each of these graphs um, you can make a flashcard with the graph on one side and the equation and name on the other side and just practice um, identifying this graph and the equation and the name. Or another way you could do that is you can cover these up and quiz yourself. So you want to get good at looking at this graph and saying, oh, that's an absolute value graph. The equation has to have those vertical lines in order to produce a graph like this. So again, to recap that, if I were to ask you to graph y equals the absolute value of x plus 2, you would make a table and you would plug numbers in for x, whatever numbers you want, okay? But you would know before even doing that, just by looking at this graph, because it has these lines, you know it's going to make that shape. So that's the point of this, is before you even make a table and graph, you know what it should look like in the end. That's what this page in our notes is helping us with.